So the film I chose was The Perks of Being a Wallflower. It is a romance, a coming of age film, and it is also a drama. It was released on October 12th, 2012. The film company was Mr. Mudd, and the producers were Leanne Halfin, Russell Smith, and John Malkovich. Stephen Chbosky was the director, the screenplay writer, and he wrote the book that the film is based off of. Andrew Dunn was the cinematographer, and the primary actors were Logan Lerman, Emma Watson, and Ezra Miller. It cost $13 million to produce this film, and the money generated since its release date is $33,384,127. The main characters are Charlie, Sam, and Patrick. They have no last names because in the book, these are not their real names. They are names that Charlie has given them to protect their identity. But in the film, these are their real names. The setting of the film is a high school and various houses, all in Pennsylvania in 1992. To summarize the plot, an introverted freshman is taken under the wings of two eccentric seniors who welcome him to the real world. The primary theme in this film is people will thrive when they are accepted for who they are. At the beginning of the film, Charlie enters high school with no friends and low self-esteem. When Sam and Patrick accept him into their group and like him for who he is, he learns to accept himself and enjoy life. By the end of the film, Charlie is far more outgoing and optimistic about the future. For symbols, Anne Helen becomes a symbol for Charlie's guilt in this film. Upon realizing that he was sexually abused by her as a child, he blames himself for her death and this leads him to attempt suicide. Once he comes to terms with what happened to him, he is able to let the spiritual burden of Anne Helen go and he feels free. Sam gives Charlie a typewriter for Christmas and writes, write about us on the first page. The typewriter is a symbol for their love. The dialogue is comparable with the projected characters and setting in the film because teenagers speak the way American teenagers normally speak. And for sets, costume, and makeup, teenagers dress like teenagers would normally have dressed in 1992. And there is a scene where the main characters put on a performance of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And they have on campy makeup and clothes like in the original Rocky Horror film. This is a perfect performance for this film because Rocky Horror is known for its controversy and its raunchiness and Charlie is made visibly uncomfortable during the show by the gaudy costumes and flirty performances and he is forced to perform in a speedo. This helps develop Charlie's character by forcing him to come out of his shell. And for camera shots, a low level camera shot is used after Charlie wins a fight to make him look bigger and more intimidating to the audience. An aerial shot is used when Charlie is laying down in the snow by himself to show how alone he is and how alone he feels. Rapid cuts are used during a, she during a scene where Charlie is having flashbacks about his Aunt Helen. These cuts parallel the past with the present to show that Charlie's memories still haunt him. A dolly shot is used during the tunnel scene so that the camera can follow the truck through the tunnel, making the audience feel like they're in the tunnel with the main characters. For sound effects and music, one song in particular plays a key role in an important scene in this film, and that song is Heroes by David Bowie. The three main characters listen to the song as they drive through a tunnel after a party, Sam in the back of the truck with her arms out. Charlie utters the most memorable line in the film during this scene, I feel infinite. The scene is about enjoying the moment and the liberation that comes with youth, and Heroes encapsulates that message perfectly. This is an iconic scene and the music makes it so. Director Chbosky specifically changed the tunnel song to Heroes instead of Landslide by Fleetwood Mac to bring the scene more emotional impact. For lighting and use of graphics, at the end of the film the main characters go through the tunnel once more, this time with Charlie in the back. The lighting in the tunnel is bright and golden, invoking happiness in the audience. This scene marks the end of their journey and the changes they have been through and the importance of their friendship. This scene is particularly important for Charlie because he has just come back from staying in a mental hospital after being forced to come to terms with what happened with him and Aunt Helen. The whole scene emphasizes the point that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and the lighting in this scene screams triumph. For my added information of interest, the film was the first time Emma Watson, an English actress, used an American accent for a role. And Ezra Miller auditioned for the role of Patrick over a Skype call, and he was so charismatic that the producers loved him so much, and he was cast within five hours of the audition. And the clip I chose to show you, it was the tunnel scene, because it's the most iconic and memorable scene in the film. 
and it really encapsulates the hopeful tone that the characters carry with them throughout the film and I just thought it was the perfect scene to show. Thank you.